Hi, and welcome to Gen Friends. I'm Sherry Hudson Passy, and I'm your host. And with me tonight is Terry O'Connell, the executive um, director of Egypt Genealogist, and Mary Kircher Roddy from MKR Genealogy. And we've got a big, big show tonight. We've got to talk about long lost family, and we've got to talk about two episodes of Relative Race because last night was. The finale. <laughs> and it was quite the finale. So to make sure we have enough time to really get in all of our thoughts and our feelings about relative race, we're going to start with long lost family. And let's go ahead and start talking about Katie and her story about how she wanted to find her biological mom. Does anybody want to jump off with that? She she just had always felt like she needed to find that mom. Well, she had a good story because she found out young. What did she say? She was five when she uh -huh. found out she was adopted. So it was always something she knew. Right. Um, and it wasn't that she had a really that like that hold to fill um, emotionally. It was just the need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact that, you know, in her baby book or all her pictures of when they brought her home from the hospital, but her adoptive parents had also put the paperwork for her adoption. So in that, she had found the non-identifying information about her birth mom and that had intrigued her for years so she wanted to find her and it, i really liked that her adoptive parents were so supportive that they were on um mm -hmm. on the show too and just said you know we're we're fully supporting her in this um so i really appreciated how open and um you know how supportive they were and that that there there it didn't feel like there was a um any kind of guilt or anything mm -hmm. about her desire to look no hostility right. or right. Yeah. exactly they understood that they were her parents and she just needed she just needed some answers you know she just needed she she had that paper and she felt like the description of the woman that gave her away fit her <laughs> that they could have been describing her and so um, I guess they applied to the show and they came and talked to her and they were able to, to find the mom, which I thought was an interesting way they found her. First, the DNA test, they started matching up names from a tree and then they found an obituary that fit the family. So I, I loved how they worked their way to do the research to find a family that looked like it would be her family and then through phone calls yeah i can imagine getting that phone call hi <laughs> is this your name did you give up a baby <laughs> i can't even imagine and then do you want to be on tv and talk about it <laughs> right oh by the way we re we've recorded you can you use it <laughs> exactly. exactly i can't i can't even imagine how brave you would have to be to do that but you know they they did find her and um uh, she she told him her story about how she was 18 and, and realized that a marriage with the, the father wouldn't work. And she she felt like she already was a statistic being a, mm -hmm. you know, a pregnant teenager. And she didn't want to be a divorce statistic and raise her child that way. So, so she chose to place her for adoption. But she did talk about that she went down to the nursery and she did feed her. Mm -hmm. She did hold her for a while. Very, very difficult. And she said she just knew that placing her for adoption was the right thing to do. I think one of the great things about watching these stories is, is you know, watching the whole emotional part unfold is always very good and seeing these connections made. But it's um, like when you look at your genealogy and you're meeting these ancestors um, through their records and you are seeing those connections. So for her, the non identifying information and she was like, it was like reading about myself. Uh, I can't tell you how many people uh, records I've gone through in my ancestors where there are so many connections, like with jobs or uh -huh. silly, silly stuff. And you're like, oh, that's kind of eerie. <laughs> it is, you know, and we, we see this t uh, all the time on this show and, and other genealogy TV shows. We see those connections. And I, 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 there's something there's something genetic about it. There's something about um, there's there's both parts. There's. The nurturing part and, and a lot of it is, is genetic those mm -hmm. things that you're interested in so it's very it's it is it's you watch this and you think oh my there is something to that you know this mm -hmm. is not just a coincidence so absolutely but their meeting their meeting was really good i i felt mm -hmm. 
you know, she brought her baby, the baby book and uh, showed that to her and said, this is my mom and this is my dad. With his funny mustache. <laughs> and his funny mustache. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I think, I think that her biological mom really appreciated that because she'd missed out on all that and to see, oh yeah, that's the baby that I, you know, they took out of my arms and then you went, now I know where you went. So I thought that was that, that was very really nice good. reunion. Yeah. Very nice reunion. Yeah, and I think it also gives like the the parent that um, calm feeling about okay, I've made the right decision. Mm -hmm. Not only are they before me, but now they've shown me that they did have that nice upbringing that you wanted for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Katie did thank her. She says, "I w I just wanted to thank you for my life because if you hadn't you had not made that decision, I would not have had the wonderful." family the wonderful life that i had and so for her to thank her i think um was just it was just beautiful for her to thank her so then we had the story of tina whose whose story was not all that um wonderful as she was growing up she was actually um taken to her grandmother's house when she was two a note was put on her and she was left at her grandmother's house because her her mom says I just can't can't take care of her. So um and then she was raised by her aunt and uncle. And I, it just sounded like things did not go well. She just did not have um a very good upbringing. She didn't have a, a sense of family even with those people around her. And so her desire was to find her biological father. I think her whole story was heartbreaking just listening yeah. to her when she said that she, as an adult, went and spoke with her mother about it and found peace, but also found out the reason that mom did let her go was because the new husband didn't think it would work with the child. Exactly. Ouch. Horrible. <laughs> Ouch. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, I, I worried about her from the first part and she's telling her story. I mean, you just want to go search for this man. You know nothing about him. You know, it's... It's different I, for some reason for me. It's different when it's a mom because it's the mom gave birth. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, there's a connection. So to me, it's it even of, this man. God. It was. It was either this man or that man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mom had given her two different names. On yes. His, well, it might have been him. Um, yeah. And so that was. Yeah. That was that was really hard, and you know, as they as they started searching, then they couldn't find anybody in the area under either name. <laughs> Lots of phone calls. No, 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 no. I didn't live there. I didn't know this person. Can you imagine those phone calls? <laughs> um, but but then through DNA, they were able to actually find a parent-child match. So there wasn't a lot of denying that one. <laughs> And they were able to find her birth uh, dad, and he was in Texas. And he, I guess, that was been interesting that yeah. he had tested, but he didn't know that he had no idea that she existed. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't testing, looking for her or looking for a child. He said he did it because his ex-wife asked him to, because <laughs> she was doing genealogy. So he had no idea that he had a daughter. And uh, so he was more than willing to meet her, and they met, and he uh, wanted to be part of her life so much so that he said that he was going to give up his um, plans that he had for retirement, <laughs> use that, those plans for vacationing, and join her family. That was too much for me. <laughs> I mean, it's great you want to have a relationship, but, like, let's build. <laughs> that relationship. Let's not just go, okay, call me daddy and I'm going to, I'll summer in the Philippines and I'll winter here so that we can be a fan. It was just too much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wonder, I wonder how that is going. You know, I hope they do a follow up on that. <laughs> I mean, I hope it goes well, but it's just a little eerie. And as a woman, as a mother, I just, it's, unnerving for me it was it was i i agree i, I was a little yeah, you know, hoping that you know he'd been checked out thoroughly <laughs> and, and, all, and all was well and they knew it would be well but yeah i was a little nervous about that myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh goodness 
Well, is there anything else you want to say about um, uh, Long Lost Family? Or shall we? Shall we move on? Move it on. Move on to, on. Move <laughs> on to relative race. All righty. Y'all, relative race was something else. <laughs> it was something else. And I see why they had to do a two-part. They could not have just left us at the end of day nine. <laughs> yeah. that. That, 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 that was terrible. So we start, we start day nine. And they are, um, they're faced with their very first challenge. And they're... <laughs> Their first challenge is this. What did they call it? I don't remember what they called it. But they they had to put um they had to put uh, the, the, um, there were tubes like inner tubes. Oh, like the stacking thing. Yeah. For the kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. They had to they had to put the striped ones with the striped ones and the solid ones with the solid ones. And the small ones couldn't be underneath the large ones so they had to go up you know in size Whew. now the black team did it okay but they were exhausted but they were smart yeah because i would never have thought to use the ones on the end i would have thought how am i getting to get these into the middle to get them to this side i never and i yeah. like puzzles i'm a puzzle person i'm not like yeah. the blue team i <laughs> love puzzles um, uh, speaking of blue team <laughs> But they they go in and they give up as soon as they get there. And you yeah. saw that they got through it. They just had to sit and think. Mm -hmm. like plain think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They just get overwhelmed. And they're just so funny. You just want to smack them. But you, you saw that my dog was um wearing his green hat for the green team. And they I, I've heard that he's got quite the collection of hats he's got like 54 hats <laughs> he brought one for every day of the race but and he's got quite the collection of hats so um so yeah so he was wearing his he was wearing his um he was wearing his green hat for uh you know support of the, the green hat team. Fedora. he said yeah, it was a fedora, fedora exactly <laughs> exactly exactly it was a fedora so um yeah, so anyway, so uh, red team did okay with it. It was just blue team that really, really was struggling. They were having a hard time. Well, and it was red team. I mean, they were lucky that they did, and that blue team struggled so much because red mm -hmm. team had that horrible issue with L.A. traffic. I mean, as wow. soon as they said Fountain Valley, I'm thinking, oh, how much L.A. traffic extension did they build into their allotted time? That's what I was wondering. How much extra time did they give them? Because everybody knows, and those of us that don't live there, just you know, heard about how horrible the traffic is. Did they give them an extra cushion? And if they did, was it just that it was even worse than normal? So that would be something that would be interesting to ask Luana or Dan about mm -hmm. how they calculate those times yes. and what kind of metropolitan area factors yeah. do they they put in? Yes, exactly, exactly. That would be, that would be. So they finally, blue team even, they finally get through <laughs> the first challenge and then they go on to the second challenge and black team's challenge was the um, the wave rider. Now those things are hard because we've been to a water park with one of those before. Terry, did you want to say something about well, I've never done it, but oh my God, I thought they had to hurt. They had their bodies were twisted, turned, and thrown at every chance they could get. Oh, I hurt watching them. I know. I would have sprained a knee on that thing. I had broken bones. <laughs> Back, neck, leg, arm. I like I liked how Rebecca said I figured out I could use my toes as a rudder. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> oh gosh. So it, it took them a while, but they were able to get through that. And then the red team had the, um, adver the adverb challenge <laughs> they had to act out. Oh my gosh, that was hysterical. I mean, they, they did, they seem to have kind of gotten over. They were a little tense in the car. There was a, a few tense moments as they were driving the wrong way up the freeway <laughs> to get to where they needed to get. So there was some tension going on there, but once they got to that challenge and once they got through the, the first challenge and then got to the second challenge, it seemed to have calmed down and we're working together. 
I think they did a good job on that. I think that would have been hard trying to act all that out. I think they did a good job. And once they learned, like, use the props, don't just mimic something. Use the props, really try to work it. Mm -hmm. He was really good at it. She struggled, but he was really good at acting out his pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would love for them to put together a little binder of their games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roll a race game. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. I don't know who sits around and finds these games, but I'd like that job. <laughs> Let's find no, some good games. Just... They need the relative race blog or on the website, the different yes, games. So we they can should. Evolve. They really, really should. I think the most hysterical challenge of the night was Blue Team <laughs> trying to get those hockey pucks. Oh my God. And, and it wasn't just that, they couldn't get the uniform on or off. <laughs> and then they had to run up the stairs. Yeah. Did you see how red he was in the car? Did you see how sweaty they were? I mean, they were drenched. <laughs> and, and when I first saw what they had to do, I thought, oh, that's going to be so easy for them. <laughs> Not so much. He said it could, it, if it was baseball, they'd have been okay. <laughs> yeah, I got that like baseball. <laughs> that was really, really funny. So, you know, when they got to the point where they had to meet Dan, I... I really didn't know. I, I figured that black team probably had done okay, but between between um, red and blue, I really they both struggled so much. They had no clue. Yeah, I had no clue what was going on. So you know they they um, oh we didn't talk about their relatives. They all met they all met cousins. Uh, the black team um, Jonathan met uh, Trujillo cousin, and uh, she. Um, had her kids there and she had all this stuff pictures and books they'd put together on her father so he was a cousin on her father's must be maybe maternal line mm -hmm. because her, yeah because it was a trujillo so um and it was interesting because jonathan said all these people that i've met i've been coming to you know find them this is the first time they've been looking for me yeah they had not met yeah, they had not met anybody on that line before. So and that's that, one thing her dad wanted was to find somebody on that line. Yeah, and he had just passed away. Yeah, like a month ago. Yeah, like April fifth or something like that. So not almost I'm like, quite, this April, not last April, but it was probably was. yeah, it had to have been because they were filming the show. So it's probably been a year ago. Yeah. So. Um. It, it, it was interesting, you know, to think that they did not get eliminated, so they were able to meet them. Think of how disappointed that family would have been. Uh, yeah. Well, they, were, they would have met, just not on camera. Right. <laughs> yes. And then Red the te Red Teams, I loved Red Teams' relative. <laughs> she comes out and he goes, can we take a selfie? And she was like, yeah, we know the, like, we know the drill. Get over here. Let's do it. You know? <laughs> so we take a selfie. And then she says to him, I know you're whooped, but who cares? We're going to go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> that was great. That was great. So they go to the bowling alley, and all of her kids are there. So he's had a lot of these where tons and tons of other people have been there, mm -hmm. not just not just the relative he was meeting. So that was really neat. And then Blue, go ahead. It looks like they like the family is together, came together, bonded, and had a really good time. You could just see all the high fives going about yeah. you know, making the strikes. And yeah. Yeah. And that, that must have just felt so good and relaxing and, you know, after another hard day of running the race. So, and then Blue Team met, um, it was a cousin through his grandfather's life. So another cousin for, for Michael and Dylan. So then we get then we get to day nine results, <laughs> and everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat. <laughs> and wouldn't you know, black team comes in first place again. I was not shocked. I was not shocked either, because they really didn't have the the hard time that the blue team and the red team had. And then they chose the uh, day ten bonus. The other option was to have a to have airplane tickets airplane to any of the relatives, any of the relatives they wanted to see again. Right, and they said we're going to win the fifty thousand dollars, and we're going to buy our own plane tickets. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So then we know that it's between the blue team and the red team, 
and dad and dan says we've never had this happen this is the closest we've ever had and he says red team you were an hour and eight minutes over your allotted time <laughs> and we're like oh and then he says to blue team blue team you were an hour and eight minutes over your allotted time what? <laughs> How do you tie? How does how is that even possible for them to have a tie? I I don't even I don't even get it. You could tell that everybody was shocked, and in the beginning they were like, "Does that mean both of us go home?" <laughs> and then the black team just gets it, forfeited, you know. But uh, nobody got a strike, so it was a lot of hurrah. <laughs> it was a, it was definitely a good end to that to day nine. It was, it was. And I'm hearing through the different channels that when the different um, producers and people heard about that, they were like, what? And they all were calling and emailing going, is that time right? Is this really, is this what I'm hearing true? It's a time? They were all shocked as well. They were absolutely shocked. You know, the one thing that struck me, and, and it's not even the tie, it was really how close they all came together because black team was only 20 minutes ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And they didn't yeah. really struggle with anything, not with the traffic, not with the... They um, struggled with the wave rider. Okay, the wave rider. That's yeah, that's right. Ahead. That's right. I was just like, 20 minutes. I mean, that traffic that the red team went through and blue team mm -hmm. sitting there going, well, I just, we can't do this. We don't, we don't know how to do this. We're, we just don't do puzzles, you know? <laughs> I was really shocked by that 20 minute. Okay, so can I talk about the um, inner tube challenge one, though? Mm -hmm. Sure. I, um, you know, I'm sitting there watching it. I'm thinking, okay, I pull out a stack of coins and figure out how to do this without all the running around. <laughs> if you can figure out how to move those pieces and then just do it. So. Well, for next time, I hope they watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good, but you know, I think when you're in the heat of the moment, sometimes your brain doesn't work the way you think it. I'm sure they're gonna as they watch back they're probably going, why didn't we do this why <laughs> why didn't we i'm sure any of us would it's got to be so hard you know you're, you're under that stress of running the cameras are there and you're it's got to be so difficult it's got to be so difficult so we have day 10 and we've got all three teams on day 10 and they flew them all back to dc so we're back to where we started. And um, as somebody had said, gosh, if I'd have known that we were gonna come back to where we started, we would have paid better attention <laughs> to where we were. <laughs> um, Mary, do you wanna to talk to us about what they the chat, what they did for day 10, what they had them do? So they had um, a map of DC and they had three challenges and one at the Jefferson Memorial one at a speaker's podium and then one somewhere it wasn't really clear it was where all it at was. the mall it was all at the yeah, mall all mm -hmm. at the mall yeah um and then so they could complete those and then they also had other little challenges which were more um specifically geared to their ancestors where mm -hmm. they could if they could solve a riddle about their ancestor they would get taken to a place i mean they would get a clue to go to a place and there'd be a coin waiting for them and whoever got the most coins would win yeah, so all, all those times yeah. everybody was coming in first place and they were asking them do you want the day 10 benefit and it was a coin <laughs> and one yeah. team wound up with two teams each had one coin and one team had four coins and that three yeah. could very well have made the difference exactly well i loved i loved the way they did this i loved the book they gave them that book at the beginning and the book had the three different challenges they had to go to and those were mandatory they had to at least go and try and get the coins from those and the other there was 33 riddles they could they could play with and see if they could get coins from that. So they had these opportunities. So they had to decide from the beginning, do we want to do the challenges first? Do we want to try to do the riddles first? And most of them ran, you know, tried to do some riddles, but they were trying to get to those mandatory things because with the mandatory, there was three different levels of challenges and it was first come first serve. So 
if you got there and it, nothing was left but the hard one, you had to do the hard one. <laughs> so you got um, coins based on how hard how hard it was and if you got it right. My interesting thing was when they were doing the declaration and they couldn't read the writing. They couldn't read the handwriting <laughs> on the declaration. Now imagine all those kids that aren't learning cursive. Exactly. They would all not get through this unless they have it memorized. And then Troy didn't understand it was the title. <laughs> so they kept saying, this is not in it. This is not in it. It was so funny. And then um, Michael couldn't get taxes. Was, was it Michael couldn't read the word taxes? And I was shouting at the television. <laughs> so I thought that was really interesting. I think the hardest one they did was a speech speech. Mm -hmm. Um, I was impressed with Jonathan. He got right up there. He looked at it once, and he he did it. So that saved his team. Rebecca had a little bit harder time with it, but she was able to finish. But the problem with everybody else was that as they were trying to learn, the other teams were trying to learn and say, "There's I can't even imagine having to do that." I, and hearing I, it, yeah. You're yeah. trying to say your thing and hearing somebody else mumble theirs in the background yeah. and hearing oh. someone else recite theirs. I don't, I, don't, I don't blame them. They ended up just giving up. I, I don't blame them because they were wasting a lot of time. At least they tried. And, I mean, it was to the point where I think it was impossible at that point for them to, to do it. And so then they could just – then they just started running and collecting coins as many places as they could find coins. And I love, I love, love the part where they had the camera on Dan and they said to Dan, Team Black is, is going back for another coin. And he goes, well, I hope they make it on time. <laughs> I love that. I thought that was so funny. Because they would have lost one coin for each minute they were late. And so there was a penalty if you did go overtime. Terry, what was your favorite thing they did on this? Uh, day 10 challenge. I really liked all, all of um, the different riddles and the clues and being able to go. And there was like the one about the, the Boy Scouts, you know, the Boy Scouts, what's the, the model be prepared? And they were like, oh, it's the Boy Scouts, you know, well, what's the Boy Scouts got to do? Find it, you know. Um, I just thought that this was the coolest event out of everything they've done in all of the shows. I mean, it was history related. Some of the clues, you know, tied into their relatives. Um, I, I just found it really cool. I thought, man, this would be the best thing for a society to do during a conference. Um, you know, it, not for everybody, obviously. It would be way too much. But to have a couple teams and, and see what you could do. I, it was I agree. Cool. Another interesting thing is my, my nephew got married in Washington, D.C. last March. And it would have been fun. We could have, you know, the wedding guests could have done the same kind of thing. Um, so if, you know, if you were planning an event in, in an area, mm -hmm. a wedding or something, it'd be really fun. Or or your own family reunion mm -hmm. to have them walk the town and, and find these things. There'd be that a lot a of ways you could use this idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's just the, the logistics of setting it up. You know, with a TV show, you've got the production company to go in, not only just set it up, but get the okay, can we do this, blah, blah, blah. Because um, I'm thinking, like, all these group things I'm doing with the genealogy conference cruises and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this would be so cool, like, in Ireland to do this in Dublin mm -hmm. or whatever. But I don't have the, the fundage to have somebody go in and do all this for me before we get there. So... I think that's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea if, if it could get worked out. I think it's a wonderful idea. So the teams have run around the mall. <laughs> they're sweaty. They're collecting coins. They know they've got to be back. They only have three hours. So they're starting to go back. They're starting to kind of, okay, how many coins can I get without being late? <laughs> can I read these clues? And they're running and they're running. And some of them, some of them are just grabbing coins, grabbing coins. But then we have an injury. We have Rebecca who twisted her ankle really badly. And I thought, oh, no, they've been doing so well. They're going to be over time. And so he's trying to help her. Can you run? No, I can't run. I can walk fast. Oh, I can't even walk fast. Do you want me to carry you? No, that's not going to help. But I think she was a trooper. She was a trooper. She was. Yeah. Because I would say, my guest, carry me. 
<laughs> they had to. I can't even imagine how exhausted they had to have been at this point. All of them. Um, so, blue team gets there first, and I thought they were going to just fall over and die. <laughs> we got there. I didn't see. Uh, but nobody's yelling, I have a cramp, I have a cramp. I was, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. But they didn't look so good coming over. I was I was wondering if they were going to have to get medical for them because like, Dylan was like, everything hurts. <laughs> I was speaking to Dylan. I thought it was hysterical when he was trying to do his speech. He was doing George Washington. He was doing yeah. a British accent. I'm like, I don't know if that was helping him try to remember the war. <laughs> But kudos to him for trying to, you know, exactly. have a little fun with it. I know. It was so, so funny. Anyway, so they get in first, and then um, Red Team comes running up, and then way in the back of the distance, you see Black Team limping. <laughs> limping, and I thought, oh, no, after all this time. But so then Dan has to pull out their coin bags. Oh, did he drag that out? Oh, God. <laughs> did he drag that out? And, and he's taking them and they're going, oh, God, on the table. You can just hear, you know, there's a lot of coins in these bags. Um, and he's so behind the table where they couldn't see what he was doing, he starts counting them. And then he has to let one team know that they're the next to be out. And it was the blue team. So, I mean, I, I felt sad for them that they didn't earn the money, but they had been able to meet all their relatives. They had had a great, a great journey during the week. And so, in my opinion, they've all really won. I mean, I know that sounds lame because everybody wants the $50,000. I would want the $50,000. <laughs> but, I mean, look at what he gained. Look at what they gained. Mm -hmm. So, Mother, father, sister, brother. Oh. Yeah, cousins, six cousins, all, all within ten days. You know, so the money would be nice, yeah. But they they came away with something a little bit even more precious than money. You know, so then instead of just saying, and then you've got this much and you've got this much, they they bring up the scale, right? <laughs> He's putting a few on this side, and he's putting a few on this side. You're this number. Up and down, and yeah. And then finally, it's the black team. And the black team has more than the red team. And so the black team wins the season's relative race. And the $50,000. Coins. By three coins. Yeah. Which is how many they. Where I had by when they started day 10. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, it was their wins. It was their wins and choosing though. It was not just the wins. It was choosing the day 10 benefit because wouldn't that be terrible if they didn't choose the day 10 benefit and chose the other every time. Because then they wouldn't have. Yeah. But one time yeah. they did choose the, the um, oh, day nice. benefit. Yeah. Yeah. And that helped them win the next time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it all worked out for them. So that means next season they're going to have to be tricky and they're going to have to change it up because then they're going to know. Right. What day 10 benefit it is. Yeah. So it's going to have to be totally different. Well, at least it wasn't like the fuzzy dice that really weren't a benefit. Thing. Yeah. It looks cool in the car. <laughs> I was really, really worried about that. And I was going to be sending some tweets. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> Don't do the muddy dice again, you know? But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, what a season. It was an awesome. It was, I loved season two. But this, mm -hmm. as touching as Joe's story was, mm -hmm. we had three touching stories this year. Exactly. And, hey, hey, if you go back through the shows very slowly, you can see Joe a few times. Oh, really? Uh huh. I didn't notice that in the background because he's doing the uh, photography. Uh huh. So there's a couple of times you go. Oh, there's Joe. I mean, I've seen him in the commercials when they are giving the replay of all the seasons. I'm like, oh, Joe. Yeah, we miss you. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. I did not notice that, but I was not really paying attention. Yeah, somebody brought it to my attention, so I started looking. The girls weren't the girls when they were doing something. They're like, sorry, Joe. 
they were saying sorry to somebody, but I don't know if it was Joe. I don't remember who they, but yeah, they were throwing, they were throwing, I think it's when they were throwing the football. Yeah. <laughs> I think they kept beating them. Yeah. yeah. So but yeah, what a, what a season. And I, I just, I hope they can top it again with the next. Yeah. It's going to be hard. Season. It's going to be hard. Well, we said that last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who could, we thought who could top Joe's story? Nobody, nobody could top Joe's story. And we had three. <laughs> we had three. And, and even Team Green. I love those girls. Mm -hmm. So much fun. And to watch them meet so many relatives that were musical was amazing. It was amazing. So I think that um, one of the good things about it is even though they were jiving each other with their text messaging, mm -hmm. they thoroughly each cared how the other one did. You know, even Rebecca, she was so happy to be winning and winning and winning. But, you know, she she cried, mm -hmm. she, you know, for everything like the blue team went through or when when right. uh, red team got his dance ashes. And yeah, it, yeah. it just made a different, um, a whole different show, a whole different, a whole different experience. And I can't imagine that these teams are, are not going to stay in touch. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, they might not be best friends, but. I have a feeling they're going to stay in touch because they experienced something so unique, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they bonded in a way that the other, the other seasons haven't. Mm -hmm. So I really think that, that they are going to, to stay. I, I hope they do a reunion show and talk to us about how they, how they stayed in touch. And, that would be awesome. You know, I, I, I would love to know how red, um, John and, um, Troy. Oh, Troy. Our, our yes. <laughs> Why, you know, we, we needed that. Yeah, we needed that information. I still would have loved it if they'd end up in the same place. And that would have been really <laughs> cool. <laughs> but maybe, I can't imagine they didn't at least think on that, you know, when they discovered that they were related, but maybe it just was, didn't work. Maybe they, the person, maybe they couldn't find somebody to say, yeah, they could come to my house. <laughs> or it's possible that they're just a, a DNA connection and they haven't flushed it out. That's true. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, um, in season two, they had a family come back from season one. Mm -hmm. so blue team the ones who made them camp. Exactly. So that would be kind of cool if they did something. I don't know which family I'd want to see come back, but that'd be kind of cool if they had somebody somebody come back that'd be really interesting yeah yeah so i, I know that uh they're ramping up i don't know if they started filming for the next season has anybody heard well they're still looking for participants i think are they or is that full yeah. yeah yeah i don't think it's said it just said for our next for a next season or something i'm not sure mm -hmm. wow i do have to add though yeah. on um this season for team black i think I think kind of at the end, age kind of had something to do with it too. Because Team Black is, they were young. They were the, I mean, Blue, Blue Team, he had the son. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, they, they were, there was no physical fitness in their world. And like he said, if we had a challenge of laying on the couch and watching TV, I could win. Exactly. I, love that. I was like, I love it, dude, because I could win that too. Oh, me too. <laughs> We should so have that challenge. We're going to come up with our own challenge for Jen friends. <laughs> We're just gonna Listen, like you know, name, name this tune, stuff, <laughs> silly stuff like that, sing yeah. the friends thing exactly. song. Yeah. Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Red, Red Team was pretty, pretty good at doing the athletic type challenges. Mm -hmm. they were, they were but they were in better shape than Blue Team. Oh, yes. yes. But yeah. Black Team had the age and being fit. I mean, they were both skinny. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say they were muscular, but they were they were in good shape. So, so I guess the lesson learned is if you want to be on the show, you need to start working out. <laughs> right, right. Get it together. Get it together. I say the same thing about like Survivor. What are you talking about? You knew you're gonna have to climb a coconut tree. <laughs> Why did you train ahead of time? Coconut tree, please. I couldn't climb a rope in gym class. <laughs> So I'm just saying, prepare for the show you're going to <laughs> give yourself a better chance. Oh, well, does anybody have any um, last-minute things they would like to say as we end 
this season's relative race. I'm gonna miss it till it comes back on again. I know. <laughs> Next year. Can't wait. Can't wait. And I just don't know. Like you said, we said this last year, but I just don't know how they can top it. It was a fabulous, fabulous season. Fabulous season. Great stories. Great people. Great challenges. It was wonderful all around. Great host. Dan does a great job of he hosting. He really does. He really does. I think the whole pro the whole production team in general. First year was kind of quirky, but mm -hmm. each year it's getting better, and and I'm sitting on my seat with them, like, ooh, exactly. You know, exactly. So I keep thinking about Green Team um, when we were at uh, Roots Tech and uh, Jamie. No. Jamie, yeah, Jamie. Jamie does a great impression of Dan, <laughs> and she said she'd be driving in the car, and she'd say, "And there's the green team." So I guess we could think tonight was saying, "Well, that's the end of all the race <laughs> for this season," but it's not the end of Jen Friends. We will be back, and we will be talking genealogy. TV and other things going on in genealogy. So next time, I'd like to thank Mary and Terry for being with us tonight. And I'd like to thank you for watching. And we'd love to hear your thoughts about um, the show and, uh, and any comments that you would like to make. And we will see you next time on Gen Friends. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hi, and welcome to Gen Friends. What a special night we've got tonight. We are actually having a relative race uh, night tonight. And as you see, we've got some special guests. But first of all, I want to introduce our panel. We have got uh, Terry O'Connell. from. She's the executive director, director of the In-Depth Genealogist. We have got Mary Kircher Roddy, who is with MKR Genealogy. We've got Bernice Bennett, who is uh, does researching in the National Archives and beyond on Blog Talk Radio. And we've got Shelly Murphy, our family tree girl. So she's here with us tonight. And then I'm Sherry hudson Passy. I'm from Carolina Girl Genealogy, and I'm your host for Gen Friends. We have special guests with us tonight, as you can see on the bottom of the panel. First of all, we've got uh, Luana Darby who's an AG and she is the researcher for uh, Relative Race and she worked with the Red Team this season. And from the Red Team, we've got Troy and Nicole. We are so excited to have all, everybody with us tonight. And we just are gonna pick your brain about everything that went on in the season. <laughs> We're so excited, we loved your story. We cried through your story. So my first question, I want to start off with Luana real quick and just ask her, how does this, how does it work? How do you find the people? And then how do you, they just, you know, interview them and they just say spit in the tube so we can start <laughs> looking for your, your, your relatives. How does it work? Um, there's kind of a process where they gain uh, people from either those of, that have submitted videos or some people also um, get them through some casting calls. Um, and answer those and then submit a quick video to um, Lensworks, which is a production company. And um, from that point, the producers take a look at them and say, okay, this has a good story to it, or this is great for TV. And they whittle it down to two teams per genealogist. So that means we're starting out with eight teams and we whittle that down to uh, four teams that will be running. And so um, at that point, if they're whittled them down to the eight, they asked them all to do some DNA testing. Okay. So that's in progress about the time that we get the information. And we say, here's the information they've gotten from us. By that time, they filled out a little questionnaire usually mm -hmm. and given us as much as they know about their family. And we start building trees. And when the DNA comes in, we work with that as well. So we're working with the traditional research and the DNA and putting the two together. Okay. I think that's important for people to know is that you have to do the traditional research as well. You can't just rely on the DNA. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's really yes. important to know. Um, <laughs> so um, how did, how, was it because of their wonderful story? Is that why Troy and Nicole, I mean, just looking at their story, I mean, I would have chosen it too. Did you jump on it and say, I want them? How did you end up with Troy and Nicole? 
Well, I was assigned a producer and a team, and I was the only one with one team. Um, they were so wanting to have Troy and Nicole on that I only had one team to research. Okay. Um, theirs was pretty DNA involved, and they wanted someone who had worked with DNA before and was familiar with that. And so um, that I was only given their team. So that's how I got them. All right. That's cool. Does anybody else have any follow-up questions for uh, Luana? Or, or do you want to just dive right? I know Luana, you're yes. I want to know as far as time frame, from the time that you get the first, from the, the individual submit their submission, how long does it take before you all select the uh, contestants? It, usually, and I found this to be true with the other genealogists, it, within about six weeks, we kind of know which team we're heading towards. One may not pan out. There may be problems contacting people or, you know, issues with their genealogy. We're not able to push it back any farther. Um, they like to have some of the stories come out and uh, Troy and Nicole had a wonderful story um, to go ahead and move with. And so um, that's pretty much how they choose. And sometimes we have to go to a third backup team if, if the first two haven't uh, done that. So they do have backups of backups. So. But Luana hasn't told you she's not only a great genealogist, she's a great private investigator too. <laughs> Yes. yes, yes. Knowing her, I know there's nothing, no rock she's going to leave unturned. <laughs> so um, when you filled out your, your paperwork, Troy and Nicole, you, um, of course, told Troy about your, your dad's, you know, story of wanting to find your dad. Nicole, was there somebody that you wanted to find specifically or were you just behind Troy finding more information about his dad? Um, more so than anything, I wanted us to find more information for his dad, but... I was kind of hoping I would have siblings out there because, um, you know, you go off stories based off what one parent tells you in a divorce and mm -hmm. you assume that there are millions of children out there that, you, you know, you're related to. But I didn't find any brothers or sisters, but I did find a couple of cool cousins, so I'll take that. <laughs> I, I was happy that you at least found two. I was like, come on, come on, find <laughs> somebody for Nicole. So, somebody's got to be related. So that was, I was, yeah, cheer I'm, I'm I was cheering out. one. <laughs> He's uh, inherited all of mine for uh -huh. sure. Yeah, what a what a good bunch that that you inherited though. And oh. one of the one of the questions I wanted to ask y'all is when you go, um, is it awkward because it seems like you get there and do the selfie and I I know everything is edited and um you know we only see a little bit but for the most part watching it it looks pretty much like you kind of bond real quickly. Is that the way it is or or is it kind of awkward for a little bit? I think as soon as we get out of the car, and I mean, I know Roberto was a great, mm -hmm. was, he was just bubbling. He was so ready to meet us. Like you, and I know they know we're coming. And sadly, uh, quite a few days, we took a while on our challenges. So we got there a little later than what they anticipated. <laughs> it was like they've been waiting to meet us so much. And so they're so excited. And then we're so excited to be done for the day and be able to just sit down, eat a meal and relax with them. Everybody was so genuinely welcoming. Yeah, it's kind of like waiting for the cable guy. They're like, they'll be here in the window between 12 and 5. So be ready. Uh, oh, I, I think my favorite was, um, I know you're tired, but we're going bowling. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Diane, she showed no mercy. Diane's got to no mercy. But no, it's 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 great. You know, when you, you get the selfie and the infamous question, you know, who you're related to. And then they immediately just bring them into their house, and you're part of the family instantly. You're part of the family, and uh, you try to make as uh, as much um, of the time that you have, whether that's hours, whether that's minutes. Um, but at the end of the day, it's you know, there's uh, just the way they open their homes to us, mm -hmm. and we're instantly part of the family. And hey, what's this? What's that? Come eat with us. Hey, yeah, whatever you need, whatever you want. You know, it's it's great. Well, Troy, in in one of the um episodes you were shown a family tree now my question is was that family tree constructed by you luana or was it constructed by the family prior to you even connecting with them oh okay <laughs> guilty as charged <laughs> one of the questions i had was what was the time frame and i i guess this question is more uh luana what was your time frame for all the research you know once they got they're selected first you start to research and of course like you said the dna comes in but what was that time frame up until the show 
started because oh. it was all done all planned. So the prior to. It's about three months. Um, Troy's took a little uh, longer. He had a couple bumps in the road on his. And so um, his took a little bit longer to find a couple extra things on. But it's generally within a three, three and a half month period. Girl, you were kicking it then. <laughs> I <laughs> wasn't you, sleeping. <laughs> three months for what we saw. And I'm sure there's more than that. Okay. That's amazing. All right. so I had That's a, amazing. A Go question ahead, also about timing. Um, so how much notice did you and Nicole get, Troy? I mean, did you get, you're going to be on next week or, you know, be ready to travel or what kind of notice did you get? It, it was a countdown, just like Luana said, you know, like, okay, you're in the top eight. Okay, you're in the top five. Um, I think from the time we 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 sent in our video like in February. No, so like well, how much time? Yeah, so the time we they were say we're on the show is about a month. Uh, no, a little mm -hmm. bit more. Yeah, uh, like the end of June. I think we had July, and then we just started shooting in August. Yeah, but maybe maybe six weeks heads up. So yeah. enough time to get your vacation arranged with work and what say, have hey, you. Look, everybody, we're going to be gone for two weeks. We got just just Bye. deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now I mean it was it wasn't. A huge amount of time because you know the show is right okay they're gonna make it we're gonna get what we need we're gonna get the answer um, so you know they're, they're right up to the wire and, and, and in fact um, speaking of up to the wire I think a week before the show is when they discovered that Jonathan was my cousin so um, that was a crazy one and that was after they were cast there was like no way they <laughs> did it before they cast him like no they didn't that's amazing. Were, were you able to find out? Tell us how, where, where's the connection? Do you guys know yet? Uh, Luana. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're still working on that one. Um, they gave us about three hours to, they said three hours. That's all you have. Find the connection. And that, and I worked with the uh, genealogist who was working with Jonathan's team. And in three hours, we couldn't find it. So we had to leave it at that. But I made a promise to Troy and Nicole that I would find that connection. And I'm still working on it, even though I'm not working on that. I'm just doing it on the side because I want to know as well. So <laughs> We yeah. all want to know. So if you need any help, throw it to us and we'll try to help <laughs> too. So we all, we all were kind of hoping we had... A, our thoughts of well maybe they'll end up at the same relative's house on one yeah. night wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be great? from the very beginning once they did i'm like we're so going to meet up somewhere along the way and of course they started on the west coast i'm like yeah we're so meeting up Are we, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't know we were going to meet up to do a head up competition but i just thought we were going to be staying the night at the same relatives that would have been cool but so john and i we talk on a regular basis on a weekly basis and uh you know uh we just haven't been able to pin it down, but you know, family's family. It's a DNA match. It's in there. So, but I think it, there has to be a line with, um, there has to be a line that, that comes from, uh, cause he's from, uh, what was it? Um, the scent, not it wasn't Portuguese. I can't remember, but it's gotta be in that area somewhere that we, we haven't quite found it. And that just goes to lead to your point. It's more than just the DNA. It's that right. It, there's more, you get a match. You're like, okay, well, that's great. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Exactly. So what? So yeah. what? As, as Shelly likes to say with records, you've got it. So what? <laughs> you got to figure out what that means. So exactly. Exactly. All right. Who who else wants to throw some questions in? I had had one question, I and I don't know if it's for Luana or Troy and Nicole or maybe even for Dion, but I was kind of curious about the, the time um, that you guys are given. I mean, when I saw you going to Fountain Valley and getting stuck in, you know, Los Angeles, I, I'm thinking, you know, how how much did the show account for that? Because you know that there's going to be traffic there, and yeah. so just because your relative is in a, a major metropolitan area, do you guys get hosed? <laughs> <laughs> they they calculate in what it should be for traffic times during the time of day that we should be there um that they calculate all that in what they in and whenever we're, we find our relatives uh place they calculate in you know like where the challenges are again how long it should take us to get there with traffic depending on the time of day. they literally hit google like they literally hit google maps because we didn't have google maps mm -hmm. they literally hit google maps the day and they know the conditions ahead in some cases in some cases not all cases and so they're like, okay, what traffic's going to take? If I were just to go straight there, it's going to take this time. And then they take the time that it would be a lot of time for the challenges, add that onto it. 
and then they take the time from the challenge to get your relative they calculate in there but we don't i mean we don't know what that time is but they do their best guess they do calculate all this stuff in there la mm -hmm. traffic um you know if it's going to be if it's a if it's a street that you got to take with all lights i mean it's all calculated in there it's just we don't know how long we that's actually going to be and it doesn't we, yeah, you're not yeah. at a, you're not at an advantage if you have the longest like that one day day nine we have the longest nearly six hours was our allotted time to complete the challenge um, <laughs> it, was a, it was already going to be a long day never mind making a wrong turn you know so we and, and again we're not you know we try to pace it out like, okay, this is so many miles. We should average and we're looking at our speed. We should, we should make this in four or five hours, you know, in our head, we're playing those mind games, trying to guess our allotted time too. Um, but man, when you come to just a standstill and you saw maybe team black one time, they got stuck in some construction and, and nobody really predicted that. That was kind of one of those things that pops up. You know, y'all handed that so well. I know you probably look back on it and think, oh, we were so frustrated, but I can't even imagine. You've been in a car for nine days with each other. I might have reached over and popped my husband one. I mean, I would have been, you know what I mean? So I say that lovingly. But the I think worst part about it was that um, this entire trip, you know, we never knew ever where we were going, ever. And I mean, from the start in Washington, we that was the only thing we knew. We had no idea. And in the only place out of the entire United States that I said, New York will probably be second. But I said, just please do not make me drive through L.A. I've done it <laughs> one time in my life, and it was terrible. I was like, I'll go anywhere. I can drive. To, I can do mountains. I can do, you tell me. But just don't make me go through L.A. And whenever they're going through L.A., I'm just like. Yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah, we saw it south of LA. We're like, mm. oh my gosh. It's... Oh, I can imagine. One we other time. Go. One other time question. I'm sorry. I, I watched right over you. Go ahead and finish what you're saying. No, and we had to get up really early that morning too, which which lends itself to your first question. Like, you know, they, they were talking about like it doesn't seem like you have enough time. Well, in that case, man, our alarm went off at 5 a.m. on the mm. on the West Coast. Yeah, we were up to get up. We were like... out before the sun came up because they knew it was going to be a long day. So that adds to an even longer day when you do that. You know, and a lot of people, they look, well, do all y'all start at the same time? No, we don't start at any same time. We were in different time zones, um, you know, in that regard. But that's, that that kind of, you know, it kind of sucks for the relative when you got to get up that early. I don't expect people to really function at 5 a.m., you know. And make us a full breakfast. They made they us did. a full breakfast. They, they did. did. I mean, even still, they made us a full breakfast. So cool. just, and then how do y'all function? You've been in the car. You've been up early, and you've been in the car all day, and then you've got to do your challenges. So that mm -hmm. seems to be a disadvantage. You're running on adrenaline. I mean, it, it, it was kind of a joke, but I, I like lost hair whenever we got home because you finally went through the phase where, like, you, you finally just can calm down. I mean, we would get there, we'd hang out with the relatives, and I mean, you want to talk about the hardest sleep you'll ever have, whether right. it be for six hours or nine hours, you yeah. are sleeping just dead. You are. We didn't take any again. break. We didn't take any breaks. I mean, I don't. They don't show this, but you know, our producers were following us. We had a crew of like seven, eight people follow us the whole time. They're freaking awesome. We're still friends. We text mm -hmm. on a daily basis, but when they're like, "Hey, y'all need to go. Y'all need a potty break. Is it going to count against our time?" Yes. No, we're not stopping. Nope. <laughs> We're not. Nope. We. She literally. She loves keeping a yeti full of water all the time around her, and she was like, "No, I don't. I don't need water. We're, that's just gonna make me pee." <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. But what about when they're interviewing you? Do they cut the time, or is that still part of your time? Yeah, when they're clock, taking the clock, little the clock. If they oh, do, do an interview like right there in the middle of a challenge, they stop your clock. But I mean, it's for yeah. like less than a minute. Yeah. So We'll stop it. And and then so we, we pretty much were trying to outlast the camera crew. Cause I mean, when they had to stop, they had to stop. <laughs> so we're like, no, no. Mm -hmm. And so Jamie, our producer was awesome. One of the guys, um, Andy or no, Sean, 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 he would fill this big old thermos up of coffee and Jamie would look at him and go, really dude? And we're like, fill it up, really? fill we're it like, up, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> the more times they have to stop, it's the best, better for you than you uh -huh. can stop. Oh, I love stop. It. Okay, I guess we'll go while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. darn. Well, I have a question because you all had all of these challenges. What was your best? Oh, Oof. Let me see. The best one? The best one would be yeah, the, the CrossFit. well, CrossFit. CrossFit was, I think, the easiest the one. Them, yeah. But the, the other one was... Um, the sculpture aids with the clay. Yeah. I don't know. 
how and, and it's just weird things that we've done because we've been together so long you know like we have a, a joke from an old friends episode where like they would do fire yeah. every time they would do rock paper scissors and everybody's like that's not even in there so we do no little signs that <laughs> no one else would know and so i and don't that, know how we did so well in that one that, that one was, surprised us that, actually yeah. surprises it was I'm our best surprised. one it surprised us <laughs> like i'm like i could you didn't need to put a blindfold on me i couldn't sculpt it anyway <laughs> <laughs> You can Y'all just, rocked the comic book one too, though. Like, Y'all oh, did that was, so fun. Yeah. that was so fun. What they what they didn't show was that okay, I I don't I don't do movies. Like I'll I mean we joke I have like maybe a three movie a year quota. Yeah. I can read I can read a book cover to cover, but I cannot do movies. Mm. And so um, he has to watch like the all the all the movies by himself. Mm. He'll sit here watching. They're, they're pretty much on to go to sleep. Yeah, it's fine. So. Um, he's over there guessing all these because he knows the characters. I'm just walking around picking up random stuff. I'm like, is this it? They're like, put it down. I'm like, okay. This whole box of this big giant thing going, this is it? Like, they're like, what? No, it's a box. That's a they're game. Like, they're like, it's a camera. And I'm like, is this it? <laughs> so that one, that one surprised me. Apparently watching he all those well. movies, um, you know, yeah. helped me with my comic book characters. And yeah. thank God for the producers bringing those back. <laughs> Hey, Terry, what questions do you have? Well, first, I want to say that I think they crushed it each week with the challenges. And I think that is, um, it has to do with you being together so long and knowing each other so well that you can do the stupid little signs that only he's going to get that um, help you get through it. Because I can totally see doing something like that with my husband and being like, you know, doing something nobody's going to catch. And, you know, he's going to be like, yes, yeah, all right. Um, so I think that all of those are really, really well. Um, let's talk about your family and all these cousins and, and uncles and everything that you met. Have you been in touch since the show is over? Have you made plans to go see anybody? Yes, 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 <laughs> and yes. Um, okay. In fact, uh, we just surprised the cousins. When I say the cousins, <laughs> uh, we met all five at my Aunt Diana's. Mm -hmm. We surprised them and came out to uh, Sacramento. We flew out to Sacramento and snuck in my my cousin Gina and her husband uh, Mike, and and the cousins' wives are all in on it. And we we came in while they're watching the episode of the previous week. <laughs> oh. Read my cousin Ronnie and Steve out. I came up around them and I said, "Hey, what's up, guys?" And they're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we are. We're like you were on, you were on my phone. I mean, now you're here." <laughs> So, I love it. That's awesome. So we we knocked out in my in my uh, my cousin Trish. She flew down from Seattle, surprising mm -hmm. too. So we did go back and see the cousins, and Is we had plans. That, no, it was episode seven. Is it seven? Seven. Okay. Yeah, um, episode seven. So um, we've surprised them, and and from the very beginning, we said we wanted to retrace the steps again, but give our relatives more time. Right. And, right. We did. We spent uh, three days out there. Mm -hmm. um, got to hang out at um, um, my cousin Gina's house, and of course, everyone hung out. And then uh, the last day, we went out and hung out with my my cousin Ronnie, third place, a beautiful place out there. And then his wife uh, Sia uh, is at a vineyard, works at a vineyard, a beautiful vineyard. And um, and uh, we lost somebody. A beautiful vineyard, and we uh, it was just great. And so we spent a lot of time with him. It was great, and we plan on doing that. It, over and over again we we're trying to map out a road trip right now we are to um to hit them all again start wow. um going through oklahoma to see my see, see jacob who was the one who delivered the family tree uh -huh. um, and that but uh, we we text constantly and we're just trying to get out to see everybody my cousin ron man he's got an amazing place the one that was almost burnt um but yes. uh, He's got an amazing place. We want to come back there, and uh, I know uh, Roberto wants wants to take me on a real hunting trip, a real fishing <laughs> trip. Um, but uh, yeah, we're we're wanting to trace them all back. We just can't get to them all quick enough. But uh, that was a really cool trip. That's you, wonderful. You need to uh, do a vlog. You know, yeah. let us let everybody know as you just little you know blurbs. We're back, and you know that would be great. Everybody would love to to follow up, but you're like probably tired of tired of cameras following you. So <laughs> we actually went through like a withdrawal when we got home that it was so weird for us to um, not have the security of the crew always with us. You kind of let your guard down because you're like, oh, they'll, they'll get that. Oh, you know, they'll get that on video. Nobody's going to hurt us. Nobody's going to get us. We don't have to pay attention. You know, we went through a depression not having that group with us because we actually <laughs> Like to hold them. Yeah. Like no, the car, the car was always filled up with gas. Yeah, I, it's true. That was nice. <laughs> That's a good perk. <laughs> 
Dalton, he was a he was kind of our guy who handled the car the whole time. Really yep. cool guy. And uh, he was he handled all the cameras and the mics and set up the car. And he always be like, hey man, I need keys and fill it up. I'm like, man, I need to bring you home with me. Yeah. <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> yeah. I, so to answer your question, we uh, yes, we definitely are in contact with the family either via text or oh, uh, while the while the show was being aired, every night after the show, <laughs> us and the cousins yep. had a call. You yep. know, they would recap going, "What the what?" <laughs> oh, bet. Oh, bet. We were doing that. <laughs> It they start out with a damn black team again. <laughs> so I also want to add, um, and I think it was when you met your uncle, you said you you've never cried this much in front of your wife. And that's yeah. I just want you to know that we were all crying with you. <laughs> it was definitely um an emotional and it, just sitting there and looking at the lovely spread of items that he had out for you definitely amazing on one side but the emotion was felt through that tv oh yeah you know it's a funny story on that we um you know when you're there and you're in the moment and you're finding this stuff out i mean obviously it's it's heartbreaking and and for troy it answered so many questions but we went back and we were having a skype meeting with tom uh, one of the producers after you know we were home and he said, I'm just gonna show you what five seconds of this. And he spun his seconds. laptop around. <clears throat> and that's when he had that's when you see the magic of the editing. So they my had Uncle the, Dave brought out the the urn. But they had the music playing mm -hmm. in on it. And both Troy and I are sitting here going, Oh my god, we can't watch this show. <laughs> we were it was ten seconds worth. Okay, and we were going, episode. Oh my god, we were so emotional <laughs> for that that little bitty blurb because in the moment, I mean you're there and there's just, there's so much going on. Reflecting back on it, that's what I was saying earlier. I, every episode, I ugly cried, every episode. You know, not just for what we went through, but how well they put together the important parts of it. Yeah. And then also obviously seeing everything else everyone well, else. Well, for through. us, for us watching the show was really following the other three teams because mm -hmm. we didn't really get to follow the other three teams. We got to meet on a Skype call every night and that was it. So we kind of knew what their day was like. Uh, from, uh, just in a snippet, mm -hmm. um, but we were so excited to watch the other journeys. And, and as much as I bawled in in our journey, I bawled equally when I saw you know blue team and black team. You know what they were going through, Rebecca and, and Michael. I was like, holy smokes! Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that everybody went through an emotional um, emotional high and emotional low. But I, you just you know, I've said it before. You just can't. When it, it's when it's unknown, you just don't know how you're going to react, and you don't know what your emotions are like, or what they're going to be like. Um, you know, you know, for Michael, Michael could have been mad. He could have been mad at his mom. Well, that's you true. know, it's very but mm -hmm. you know, you don't know what you're going to you feel. You 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 know, um, you know. For my dad, I just you know wanted to ask that question. I didn't get to ask that question, but at least I have that closure now. Absolutely. You know, and I. And I don't know that uh, my cousin Gina said it best. She said, you know, back in the day, if you would have probably met him, then you probably would have never met us. And that's true. That's true. Because he didn't know about that family either. No. So it was really cool. I, I always tell people, if it wasn't for the show, there's no way we'd have been able to make the discoveries we did because Luana is basically a private investigator. And <laughs> the DNA only takes you so far. I mean, the pure fact that she questioned a newspaper clip there's a newspaper clipping. She goes, I wonder what her name's doing in this newspaper <laughs> clipping. You know, I would have, the connection would have never, it would have never happened the way it did without, without the show. And it was amazing. I will say this too, you know, we've talked and I don't know if you've caught any of our little shows as we've journeyed with you. Um, but we've said each week, you know, every year we've all picked a team like, Oh, you know, last year team black was like the hot team because it was such an emotional story. This year was so different because of, there wasn't just that one team with a story, you know, you uh, blue team, red team, black team all had just such um, emotional stories that we wanted all of you to win. But green team, the girls were such fun, mm -hmm. loving girls like you wanted to see them win, too. So it was hard just to even watch them leave. Yeah. They've never done this any other year. So it's no. really an awesome year. You know, our producer, Jamie, he's, he was like, hey, man, I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to have a hard time beating season three because of just the stories. You know, when 
when you know Jamie and Morgan found out that their uh, great grandfather died as a free man. That was an emotional time, right. you know. Um, you know, when slavery was such a big part of their family roots, and then to find out that information they didn't know, and and then run into people like, I think you used to babysit me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, it was it was very hard to, to pick a favorite, and I don't think that there's there's any one favorite um, that you could have picked this season, and I. I know that, um, and Luana can attest to it. They got their hands full coming up um, because they're they're trying to get more seasons into a year, and I don't even know what that's going to look like. So. <laughs> that, that's what I'm hearing. I'm excited because you know, last night I was, oh, I don't have relative race to watch. <laughs> we <It was laughs> draw last night. <laughs> we, need to, we need to turn it on to see if maybe they're just like doing like a combination to show yeah. what's coming up we kept thinking that we, and then there was not it wasn't on we're like we, I guess we'll watch we the opened up jokes. the byu tv app and we're like no not on there not even um not even random acts was even on there <laughs> in our right before us. i was like okay well i guess we won't watch that either <laughs> well we keep suggesting uh, suggesting to them to do some kind of reunion you know show follow-up show where are they now what are they doing and then somebody suggested for next year at roots tech that we have a big uh, relative race fan, you know, get together with everybody. So <laughs> that would be. I mean, the, the fans, it's the fan base is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, the challenge for um, Lens Works Productions is in, in, in all the genealogy out there is to find people who haven't found all their family and did all the DNA work because it is getting more and more traction. I mean, judging by Roots Tech, what is it, mm -hmm. 40, 40 to 50,000 people there? I mean, come on. You know, and so it's going to be a bigger challenge, but I think it's uh, it's going to be fun to watch the, the upcoming seasons and, uh, you know, just kind of know what they went through. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. Well, we hope you'll hope we hope you'll come back because people come back to Roots Tech. They come back to Roots Tech <laughs> and, oh, and yeah. talk to all of us there. <laughs> so that's a hint. Please come back where you can uh, kind of tell us some behind the behind the scenes. Um. I've got one last question and then we'll turn over to anybody, anybody else has uh, one last question because our time is going to, I promised y'all we'd only keep you about 30 minutes and so I don't want to take up all your night. So <laughs> is there something that, that didn't air that you would like to share with us, something that we didn't find out that you would like to share that you can share that you're comfortable with sharing? Yeah, and see. if not, that's okay too. No, I, I, I don't think there's anything the wrong. The only thing I wish would have aired is my infamous oh, yeah. sky hook shot. The balloon. Y'all remember the balloon one? The <laughs> yes. balloon challenge? Yes. Well, they didn't show it, which I thought for sure they oh, would show it. Would you know it. the beginning of the show where you hear me say, Woo! Every episode? Yeah. Right? Yeah. He made this sky hook shot with a dart. First of all, wait. And pick the wait, then pick the one balloon that it's impossible to hit in the back so we could get the <laughs> Wait, my first two throws, oh, they yeah. had to move the crew. Yeah. Because <laughs> I and my darts went this way. They're like, whoa. They're like, time stop. Out. We time have out. to move the crew. So I was just trying to just get a penalty so Troy could go. And I'm just looking at him like, this is never. And I was like, what do I do? And I throw it and that thing popped the balloon <laughs> under the I we still and so Troy jumped up. Everybody just stood there. It was silence. Everybody stood there like that just yes, happened. And everybody's like the whole crew was just like they were going. And I said, y'all, yeah. uh, it'll never happen. That again. excitement, that excitement His of that excitement, right there. That's what's in the I, I'm surprised it didn't make it. it probably, I think it might have made some of the other footage, but uh, it was. Uh, I mean, was they crazy. literally they had to move the crew. I was throwing so in the opposite direction of where I was had, aiming. The crew had to move. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical because all the way through we've been saying these games would be so much fun at a family reunion. Oh yeah, just so much fun. But when that game aired, I thought <laughs> my kids would throw them at each other. <laughs> and well, they're, they're, that they're that to not family friendly. Yeah, it was not family friendly. <laughs> yeah, if you're if you got bad aim, people could get hurt. Crew almost yeah. did, and then I made that shot, and I was like, that of all we did, that has to, like that was my one thing I did. On accident, but I still did it. <laughs> did do it. I, I think also um, the one thing that didn't air is when we went to my aunt, my auntie D's house, um, at, well, Gina's house, and met my auntie D. That, that y'all don't have any idea the size of the food spread that they put out for us. It was <laughs> every countertop. Uh -huh. They had enough for us, for the crew, for friends of the crew. Y'all could have come and ate. I yeah, mean, there yeah. was so there were. 
what four different cakes that said welcome home on yeah. them i had some portuguese pastries and you know it was just they didn't they didn't uh, do that part justice because it was an amazing homecoming. It was it was phenomenal. Um, aside from that, there was a couple parts where, where I think we were a little more frustrated, and they cut those out, which is fine. That's, that's <laughs> cool. Probably, that, day nine. I mean, that was just the. the I, th I think up to everything they they portrayed it well, but day nine they did a. A very favorable job of not making us look as irritated. It's, really it's a family friendly <laughs> show, you know. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, after watching episode nine, I was like, wow, I felt sorry for uh, Michael and Dylan on that hockey game. Holy. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, they were, they were like the comedy relief, though, almost with every show. I'm oh cramping, or I can't do it's this, or they would turn the wrong way, or oh. I was like, nope. I don't do puzzles. Nope. I don't do nope. I don't, and I'm just thinking, poor Dylan, what was he doing? Because they didn't give you any breaks. Like our very first challenge when our cup broke and we didn't know how we were going to build that thing. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, well, our, and they're, they're just like this. Your, your time's still yeah, going. The producer and everybody, just, they're stoic. They're like, they just look at you. Your time's still going. And I'm looking at Troy going, we're, we'll never, this is never going to end. <laughs> we smacked that baby with a broken cup. We did. <laughs> Oh, it's hysterical. You guys are great. The whole show is great. Who else? Anybody else? I know you probably, we have tons of questions, but like we said, we, we said we wouldn't keep you too long. Oh, that is, wait, we have one thing that we did. That, that yeah, would have they didn't been, show the postal okay, work. I would have gotten her fired. Oh, that's probably probably why they didn't put her on there. Oh, what happened? What happened? I flagged down a post, uh, a, UP, a USPS postal service person to get us to our relative. Oh. <laughs> And where it was a street though that one of those ones like it started in one neighborhood, then completely stopped and opened up in a totally Three different neighborhood. Three neighborhoods over. So he's over there and he's this just talking to her to her cousin's house. Yes, uh, Sherry and Jerry's house. Yes. So he's looking at this lady and she's doing her mail route. She's putting the collector stuff in there, and I'm like, "Oh, ma'am, do you know where this street's at?" He said, "Can you just show us?" And she would slow down for a second. She said, "Okay." No, no. First, she said, <laughs> "I have a colleague and running a route over there," and I'm like, "You know what?" The, the, I'd rather take your word for it. So would you like show us? And she looked and looked. And let me tell you what, buddy. She knew where she was going, and she almost lost us because she was going so fast. <laughs> she <laughs> took you there. She just didn't she tell you. Me. She took. Oh, she could have gone first. We that's followed. Never happened. Never happened. We flagged them down, and she. You know, what? that's probably why it didn't. She, they, she probably, probably got gotten, gotten in trouble. Yeah. But uh, she took us, and we almost. She almost lost us. She was flying. She was going so fast that little truck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so. I'm surprised people well, weren't getting texts saying you are not allowed from now on to ask postal workers. Right. Yeah, that was. That was. One one instance where they did say you couldn't go to firehouses anymore, right. Right. and and Troy, I think it was you said I got a secret weapon or something because mm -hmm. you had that, a plan that for wasn't it. Our secret weapon though, the firehouse wasn't our secret weapon. What yeah. we what we what figured was, out was uh, hosp hospitals. We found hospitals on the map, but they had that. It was we found that, and, and Jamie could not figure out our producer. He was like, I don't know how y'all made a beeline for this hospital that had the name on it. That was for a city selfie. We saw it on the map and you know, some hospitals are named after people and stuff. This one was named after the city. Santa Rosa. So we went straight there and he was like, how did y'all see this from, we were almost nervous. It wasn't in the city limits. Yeah. Mm. It was just there. And, and so that was our secret weapon. Then from there on, we never found another hospital that had the did, city name. There was no other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Did, did y'all practice taking selfies? Did you find a flip phone and practice ahead of time? Because y'all did pretty well. <laughs> yeah, except a couple times. I have the perfect selfie arm. It does help. Mm -hmm. But um, a couple times we cut out the city name, like like mm -hmm. the first letter. And, uh, you know, I'm like, it, yeah. it's Eureka, not Eureka. <laughs> I, I cut off the E, you know. So, but yeah, I we didn't. We did try to practice with a paper map one time, and that didn't go really well. That didn't go well. Y'all, y'all need to do a, a um, some kind of tips for next seasons. <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice your selfies. You know, look at a map before yeah. you go. Remember how to read them. You know, all those kind of things. Definitely. You know, my cousin Jonathan. He's a sharp guy, man. That he he all it took him like five minutes to study a map, and he knew the whole thing. He's yeah, sure. We kind of saw how sharp he was when he was able to <laughs> memorize that speech mm -hmm. the first, first time. And why? Are you kidding me? First try. First yeah. try. Yeah. And I, I don't blame anybody for leaving that challenge because I don't know how anybody could have learned that with everybody else trying to do it. So plural that was supposed to be singular and you had to start over and it was like, I was and they're talking beside you the whole time. Yeah. 
Yeah, when the other teams come up there and start reciting, and you're like, oh, this is – and they're reciting different speeches, so it wouldn't, it's not the same one. So you're like, oh, this is going to be tough. Yeah. yeah. One, one for me, and then I'm going to turn it up, I promise, one last, because I really – I wanted to make sure you guys are okay with your house. I know that things were not so good um, with your home. I mean, everybody was going through fires, and, and you know, the, hur the, uh, the hurricane was coming through. And so are you guys – was everything okay when you got home? No, we had a, we had a little under four feet of water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it flooded, um, and uh, we're still actually in a rent house right now. Mm -hmm. um, ours is ninety nine percent done, and we're putting it on the market. Yep. And uh, but we, yeah, that was the plan all along. It just we yeah. didn't plan on having to remodel it and then put yep. it on the market. Right. Yeah. But yeah, we um, it, it has never. We've lived in that house for thirteen years. Yeah. Never and um been through several hurricanes you know that's not a big deal for us here and mm -hmm. um it, the lake has never been up but obviously there was there was more water than the city of houston knew what to do with I me mean, we we are really very fortunate i guess in the fact that uh, tristan our son was able to get you know all of our animals get into a rent house and get them you know all, animals were fine which is all we were really concerned about yeah um <laughs> other stuff is just stuff you know kids would be fine they'll, they're get kids, the animals yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I hear you. That's what I'd be doing. Get the animals out. <laughs> they can't stick themselves, you know? And so um, the animals were good, and, and we were very fortunate. Um, Jamie stayed in contact with all four of our kids mm -hmm. every day. He would text mm -hmm. them for updates, and he his um, speech to us was that if he didn't say anything to us about it, then everything was fine. No news if there was news, news we needed to know, so he came to us, I don't know what day it was, He's six or seven, he said, uh, you, mm -hmm. got, you, got, you got water in the house. We're like, okay, where are the animals? And they're fine. We're like, okay. I mean, we can't I mean he really about wanted, it. I mean, he really wanted us to, you know, focus on the race, obviously. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he wanted to make sure everything was good at home. And, you know, we weren't, we couldn't watch TV. We weren't connected to the internet or anything. So the toughest part for us was when it was first going on, we had, we left DC and we're going through the airports. And of course that was the only thing on the news. And then when we got, and then when we got up to <laughs> Seattle, the only other thing on the news was the wildfires. Mm -hmm. So leading up to it. So we went from the floods to the fires. So uh, there was natural disasters all around us, but we managed to make it to day ten. We did. We did. Awesome. Y'all did. Y'all did a great job. That was that was just neck and neck. Okay, I'm turning it over so I can keep my mouth quiet and let y'all talk. Who else has got questions? Have Maybe you met yourself. any other cousins following the episode? Any any new people? We get actually every time the show airs, we get. We've gotten several, both of us, um, mm -hmm. notifications, people that want to friend us on Facebook, and they're like, I got contacted by Relative Race, and they want to connect, and so we are starting to reach back out to them since we couldn't do it till the show was done. Um, but we get people all the time, they're like, we were contacted, we know we have your DNA. I got a lady the other day that just sent me one, and she said, I'm your cousin, I'm not sure how, she said, I'm trying to figure it out. And I was like, well, the stuff that Luana sent us was about 300 pages of information, so, <laughs> and I don't know how to read it, so I promise I'll look and see. <laughs> I, I would check with Luana first to make sure you're not getting stuck. That's why I said, send them the link. They don't want to friend me. So we thought they're pretty legit. But you can, you know, when I, I told Nicole, I taught Nicole how to check out people's profile and know, hey, look, you know, this is really a person. So, yeah, we've had, I've had several people hit me on Facebook Messenger with the same scenario. We just couldn't make it work. But my, you know, my husband is a match or whatever. And so, we try to, you know, we try to get back to them as much as we can. And, you know, I know life happens, life gets busy, but um, it's, our family is much bigger than what <laughs> portrayed on the show. That's for sure. Yes. Awesome. Go ahead, Shelly, ask your question. I see you have one. Can't, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Oh, do you All want right. me to ask? I'll ask it for you. She wants to know how your kids handle you being gone. They probably, mine would party. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the Tristan, I believe Tristan probably did. Um, he had a little bit of fun, um, How but, old is he? How old is he? um, he's 19. He's about okay. to be 20. Yeah. Parted. yeah. So <laughs> the oldest one that's 23 that just got married. Um, she had a meltdown. Um, whenever I called her, she was allowed to get her phones back. She said, you can't ever not talk to me for 12 days again. <laughs> <laughs> and just to hear our voices. She was just. Total, but you know we're the closest one. So she she had separation anxiety. Um, the other than that, like they're because they're such a different, such a different generation. 
to them, like us saying, hey, we're on TV, they're like, cool, I was on YouTube. You're like, okay, that's not the same thing. You know what I mean? Or we found more family. They're like, we know our family. So. And, you know, our youngest is 17. So, they're, you know, they're very independent. But at the same time, they were like, they were like, okay, cool, mom, dad, we on for a couple of weeks. Yeah, as let us know you can be like, does there be groceries? I mean, never, that's, never, yeah. never mind. But, you know, uh, you know it was the situation obviously there's a hurricane going on here my uh i had to relocate a couple of times she's she was in college and she had to relate relocate like three times to get rescued out so um and she handled it like a champ you know um nothing we could have even done if we were here you know that's that's kind of the only sobering thought for us when all the devastation was happening is that you know even if we were here what could have we actually done you know when there when there's high water there's high water i mean you're either getting in or you're getting you're not getting out i mean it's so true. It just doesn't, it doesn't play. It just shows no mercy. So, um, you know, but, uh, they, they all, they all made it through it. Um, I, I think they've all watched everything, you know, they're, they're all watching from their smartphones and they're just like, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that you went through that. This is crazy. Um, but, it, and then some of them are like, yeah, that's cool <laughs> because, because they know their whole family, you know, they, I guess they don't really, they don't, they don't recognize understand that it goes deeper than just us and their grandparents, mm -hmm. you know, and their great grandparents, you know, it, it's, it goes much deeper than that. So, you know, when you've got all, most of everyone mm -hmm. living in your family, I, I've only lost, um, I think a grandfather and, and you know, Nicole's lost a grandfather and grandmother. Mm -hmm. So you got to meet them all. So they're like, okay, I kind of knew who they were. So, you know, big deal. Yeah, there'll come a time though, as they get older, it'll mean more to them. Yeah. It will. It, there'll yeah. come a time when it means more. So keep that footage around. They'll want to see it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who I else? I did take my son okay. through my uh, through my dad's wallet and stuff. He was that was pretty cool. So oh, yeah. that. I waited till I waited till um, he got home. Gosh, I get emotional every time. <laughs> I waited till he got home and I said, "Hey, I want to share something with the son." So we went through, and it's amazing how much you can find out about son. And you know, back in that day, just going through their wallet. Nowadays, yes. not so much because so much information is stored on the phones, and you know. Mm -hmm. My dad, I mean, he literally kept everything in there. I, I mean, I could get yeah, psychologist card was there. Where we, I mean, I, I could see, um, you know, he struggled with alcoholism. His AA meetings were in there. You know, I'm, I'm like, oh, he, wow. everything. Lawyer. And his lawyer was in there. I mean, like every, his whole life in there. I could tell his truck driving license, his whole life. I could tell you his whole life story just by his wallet. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's so true. I've got my great aunts. She had a picture of me and my brother in there when I, got that after she passed away. So it's not as close, but I completely understand what you're saying. It's just yeah. their whole lives are in those wallets. A different time. It was a different time, yeah. you know, and it, it yeah. just, uh, it's really cool to have it. Yeah. Another cool thing about the wallets is you can tell a lot about the family by the type of wallet it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a Harley Davidson wallet. I oh, that just makes sense. <laughs> It's a Harley Davidson wallet. It's, it's a, the, the insignia is a little worn off, but it's clearly a Harley Davidson wallet. There's no doubt. I know. Which again just suits him because uh, all the pictures we have him on his Harley and sure. his urn is a Harley for crying out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh sure. Sure. All right. We are we are way over time. We're sorry. We are way over time. Anyone else last minute want to throw something in? I would like to say something. Go right ahead, Luana. Um, we work with a phenomenal team when we work as genealogists. Um, Jamie, our producer, and Rachel, associate producer, and the rest of the team. They're just phenomenal. They say, what do you need to make this happen? What do you need from us? And so it was working that seamlessly working with our producers to be able to have the story come. And Troy's first question was, I want to know about my dad. We found that out fairly quickly. And then we, uh, another little hint you did not see on air was, we said, okay, then let's let, tell him about his dad. We quickly found out that his dad was also adopted. So it was like, oh dear. And it was a private adoption with no additional papers. So it was totally on DNA that we had to put together this thousand piece puzzle and say, how do we make this make sense? And some of it came in at the very last minute um, that again, it was just, you know, little bits and pieces that came together and working with the LensWorks team was phenomenal. So I just wanted to say that. They're amazing. Amazing. They're family now. They they don't yep. consider themselves anything but family now. Yep. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And before we, you know, and I want to give a little shout out to our, our Mary here on the team because she figured that one out watching the show. 
<laughs> but we didn't say anything because it wasn't mentioned on the show. So we didn't say anything as we were recording. But she she has a tendency to research the things that she sees on shows. Yeah. And if I see a census record or I saw um, I, I saw a birth record, I was like, wait, that's not the same name that's on the tree. It was a, a California birth index. Yeah. And um, and I, I was like pausing it and, and trying to zoom in and see what I could see. Don't and get anything you know, I'm a little obsessive. So if you ever need any help, Luana, just give me a call. <laughs> She's, she, she knows where to find all of us. You know, we're, we're, we're ready and willing to help. So anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody for being here tonight, especially Luana and especially you, Troy and Nicole. We have enjoyed so much watching your journey. And, and seeing everything that you've gone through. And thank you for sharing it with us because that had to have been difficult because you didn't know what you were going into. And those raw emotions, thank you so much for sharing it with us because we learned a lot from you. And um, it, 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 for us as genealogists, it is amazing to watch your story and how they found your story and we love genealogy tv and for you to share what you went through is just a joy for us and we cried along with you and we laughed along with you and we cheered and we <laughs> we were upset when things didn't go your way so thank you so much for being here well, it, was, it was our pleasure and I, I can tell you that it would not have ever happened without the amazing crew and all the genealogists that took part of it luana you're awesome i'm um, the whole crew um, it was a pleasure to share the journey. I didn't know how I was going to react to it, but uh, you know, I got I owe all the credit to Nicole. She was the one that, that said, "Hey, you want to do this?" And she pushed me to do it. And uh, it, didn't hey, this take, looks fun. it didn't take much <laughs> much convincing, but I'm sure glad I did it. And I, you know, I I'm an ambassador of the show and the process, and 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 really encourage folks if they've got some, you know, if, if they've got some unknown family out there they want to connect with. I I, I know that. Uh, tr trrcasting.com like the back of my hand i'm like go there do it tell me your story um luana's not busy enough um so, <laughs> she got nothing else to do nothing else to do. So, um, i encourage everyone to do it it's, it's amazing thanks for having us on it was it was a fantastic journey so and i'd do it all over again if i had more family to find mm -hmm. that's <laughs> fabulous so if, if there's anybody out there that hasn't seen the season's relative race please go to byutv.org you can still watch them and enjoy the journey for all four teams you will not regret it Thank you, everybody. This has been Jen Friends, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody.